Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. In this week's episode, I want to talk about that initial crisis management meeting. The meeting where you have learned there is a crisis. It could be a natural disaster that's coming in. It could be a data incident. It could be executive malfeasance. You might have a reputational management problem on your hands. But this first meeting is important because it sets the stage for collaboration and decision-making and communication. It also sets the stage for a common understanding of what's going on in the crisis, the situational awareness of what is happening. And so I wanna talk a little bit about what that initial meeting should look like. If you're familiar with the incident command system, we call this a size up. It is understanding the scope and scale of the incident and the resources that are necessary to combat it. So we highly encourage organizations to really use this meeting in that way, to use it to understand what is happening and what our initial actions need to be, and then figure out what are some of the long-term actions that we need to go figure out. I would encourage you to build a standard meeting agenda for that first crisis management meeting or emergency management meeting, if you want to call it that. So the way that we structure this typically is in this way, that we start off with a brief greeting and a roll call. A greeting is like, hey, welcome to the call kind of thing, right? But the roll call is I'm going to go down the roster because I want to understand which representative is here from which organization, who's repping, you know, human resources today, for example. I also want to clarify who is leading the incident. So whether you have a system incident commander or you have a a corporate incident leader or you have a crisis leader, whatever you choose to call it, what it, who is acting in that role? And then do you have any other roles that are important for you to call out? Do you have a scribe, for example, that is taking notes? Do you have a coordinator who is really there to keep the process on track? Whatever that is, we start with the the brief greeting, the roll call, an explanation of the roles, and then we get into a briefing. The briefing should be kicked off by the incident leader, and you want to provide a very brief overview of the incident and any key decision points that we need to make it today. And then you should turn this over to whatever subject matter experts are best positioned to brief the situation. That might be you as the incident leader, and that's totally cool. But this also might be a data incident, a data breach, an InfoSec incident, in which case you should have the CISO and their team talk about what has happened, what you understand to date. The important part of this portion of the briefing is that you want everyone to walk away from this segment of the meeting with a very clear understanding what is going on. You don't want to leave them guessing. You want to make it clear what has happened or what is the threat that we have gathered here to take action against. And then you can get into what are the immediate action items that we need to take care of. Um, for example, is if this is a incident that you want to be covered under privilege because you've got a potential data breach, your legal team should be using this opportunity to explain privilege and how documents and communication are to be marked, how they're to be sent, how they're to be stored, et cetera. We should be thinking about initial messaging, about talking points and approved statements, uh, if that's necessary. And we should think about just, do we have the right staffing and resources to support the incident? We should talk through, are there other additional internal teams or subject matter experts or third parties that need to be included or activated. For example, if this is a data breach situation, do you need to activate your third party forensics firm? Do you need to activate outside counsel? Do you need to activate your outside PR firm? Do you need to bring in a ransomware negotiator? These are all things that should be a part of your standard process that you're talking through in this situation. You also then want to go around the room and have every member of your crisis management team be called upon. And what you're looking for here is do they have questions? And do they have anything else that they want to bring up that needs to be offered 
at this point in time. By doing this, you're one, you're being inclusive of all of the disciplines, and so you're less likely to miss something. But it's also a good rigor to get into so that we're constantly seeking more information from the group, giving them an opportunity to speak. We're also giving them an opportunity to ask questions and make sure that their understanding of the situation aligns with the rest of the group. As we wrap up, we want to think about what is the next date and time we're going to get together, what's our ongoing cadence for these meetings and the communications that we need to send. We should capture any other needs or questions or obstacles or assistance from around the room. And then we need to validate what kind of notification and briefing or what kind of communication do you need to do to the executives about this situation. Finally, as the incident leader, you should be recapping your decision points, the assigned action items, and the next <clears throat> meeting date and time. Just provide a quick recap of the situation, the outcomes of this meeting, the decisions we need executives to make, and then you want to ensure clarity of the situation by those present and just ask, are there any other actions we should be taking at this time? And then you're done, you close up the meeting, you start to work on your situational awareness communication about what has happened, uh, the situational update as we like to call it, and then you're preparing for that next meeting. This type of structure and rigor will give benefits to your program. It will keep your team on a consistent understanding of what these meetings are going to look like. And following a consistent templated process will make sure that you're not missing anything along the way. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.